Hey guys, so this is a redo of a story that Nick Beardy has already done before but it hasn't been voice acted and from yesterday when we when we done the goblin video a lot of people seemed to enjoy it so you should like this. Plus there's a straw poll down in the comments on who's the best waifu so you decide if it's sexy, punk, the triplets or craz. You let me know. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you at the end of the video. Be me. 3.5 game with a group from Illithids and Infatuation. DM wants to play a game with a monster party. More specifically, a monster girl party. Normally cringy enough to not hold my interest, but this group was a ton of fun before, so worth a shot. Convinced to read through the setting books, not for the art for once. Setting is surprisingly dark when you ignore all the hot monsters. Extremely violent and rapey with a lot of end of the world scenarios. Unspeakable evil has never been so adorable. <laughs> Decide we are going to be a low level goblinoid gang. Sexy, <laughs> the bugbear, aka Big Sexy, was a barbarian. Pong, the hobgoblin, aka the boob goblin, was a fighter and our glorious alcoholic leader with a stunning intellect of tame. Only one in the party who was literate. And that was just to make sure she could identify her drinks. Then the goblins, which were the rogue triplets, Hoi, Lee, and Fu. Last but not least, my character, Kraz, the, go the goblin savage bard. Chosen instrument is a gong taller than she is. Plays it frantically swinging her maul at it. Screech Isle Familiar E makes her move silently, checks even more insane, and helps her performance by screaming. Goal is to capture as many men as possible to drag back to your cave house. Mostly to make them reach high things and open stuff for us so we don't need to keep making sexy do it. <laughs> Life is hard when most of you are three foot tall. First expedition out of the cave. Going to follow the roads to the nearest town to abduct some guys. Gonna go find me a man. <laughs> Get lost in under an hour. Only Punk can read the road signs and she's drunk. No idea where we are or how to get back home. Spend half the day following roads in circles. E doesn't want to do anything because it's still his bedtime. Punk has a brilliant plan. Unroll a blanket. Fu has the highest spot check. Sexy throws her up in the air while the rest of us try to catch her with a blanket. Get lucky and see a merchant caravan travelling down the road on the fifth toss. Everyone gets in position and waits. Ready to spring the trap. Caravan has guards and what appears to be adventurers. New plan. Wait until the last cart goes by. Everyone piles in the back when the guards aren't looking, while I quietly use lullaby with the gong. Oh god, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what Quietly. <laughs> Six goblinoids, a gang, and an oil crammed in the back of a fur cart, hiding under all the pelts. Goes good for about an hour. One of the guards walks behind the cart and passes a spot check. Cast sleep and drag him into the cart. Not enough HD to soak it all. Put Ho, Lee and Fu to sleep by accident. Doesn't matter, caught a man. <laughs> Punk smothers him every time he wakes up so he doesn't alert everyone else. Eight hours later, night time, still hiding in the cart. Caravan finally stops and E woke up. Slip out of the back and check around. Few fires going and they're setting up tents. Entire party has dark vision and good move silently checks. Let it begin. Sneak our way through the camp, stealing all the buckets and cups we can find. Wait until we are all in position. Start flailing wildly at the gong while E screams. Party dumps water on all the fires. Caravan thinks they're under attack by a war party. Merchants scatter and guards running around blindly. Sexy is taking her time, picking out the biggest, strongest man to hit on the head with a club. Punk beelined for the one guard in particular and grappled him to commence smothering. Holy and Fu are just running around, kneecapping people and having a blast. After a few rounds, everyone either ran off or is knocked out. Party didn't get hit a single time. Load the captives and as much loot as possible into the fur cart. Ride off in the middle of the night. Still hitting the gong. <laughs> Going home and taking inventory. A full cart of animal hides. Wine, lumber, spices we can't identify. And a crap load of seed. Sexy bagged herself a lumberjack. <laughs> Punk captured a mercenary who breathes as a hobby. She could smell the booze on him. Ho, Lee and Fu dragged back a flower merchant. Kraz kept the guard she put to sleep who used to be a chef. Put her new captured husbands to work, making her home suck less. 
The lumberjack we creatively named Jack accepted his fate surprisingly well and built a wall for the front of the cave. Blows our tiny minds when he makes a functional door with hinges. <laughs> built us all beds so that we could stop sleeping on the floor. Sexy was the size of a small room. Punk was extra soft and wide. The triplets had a three-story bunk and Kraz's was basically a sandbox filled with animal hides. Jack is now the group favourite. Punk's mom, lovingly named Grog, worked with Jack to make a brewery. He wasn't exactly thrilled about his new life, but between the constant river of booze and smothering, he usually couldn't get very far. Holy and Foo's boy they named Ku worked with Grog to start planting hops when he wasn't being forced to grow flowers or braid them into their hair. <laughs> They had to track him down and drag him back a few times before he gave up. Last but not least, Kraz's man, First. He was the first and buried in furs. Was in charge of feeding everyone and working alongside Ku to make sure we didn't all starve to death when we were too busy sleeping to go hunting. Made sure to dominate the hell out of him so that he wouldn't try to poison us or run. Had that boy whipped. <laughs> Cave home is now somewhat functional and doesn't look like it's inhabited by a bunch of goblins. Husband slash man servants are actually making life easier, but we're all chaotic neutral evils, so we're going to need more. Party has no ethical qualms with this rationale. No rest until we have an army of men to make sure we never have to work again. Slavery is okay, as long as it's perpetrated by cute girls. Be me. Still with the goblin party. Cave house looking good, but we still need to actually do work now and then. Can't have that. Need more manservants slash husbands. Need to make an attempt to find the nearest village again. Gotta make sure the boys don't try to run while we're gone. Leave Jack and First in charge of the cave since they're the most whipped. Orders not to let Ka run away again. Punk makes sure Grog is too drunk to bother making a break for it. Reflects on the ethics of dominating and drugging innocent men to be our slaves for about five seconds before we set off to find more. <laughs> Learned our lesson from last time. Don't leave home until it's dark. Failed the plan beyond that. Still can't read and Punk is still drunk. Not too surprised when we get lost again. Try tossing Pa again, but she hits her head on a branch and vetoes the idea for a repeat attempt. Stuck wandering around the roads. Spot some fire in the distance after a bit and go to investigate. Adventuring party. Adventurers mean big, strong men. Sexy is excited to add to her stud muffin harm. <laughs> Spread out and sneak our way over to the fire. Four adventurers. Some skinny elf ranger is awake on watch. Send in Kraz and her gong because somehow she's the sneakiest. Smack him over the head with them all. <laughs> Everyone else just kind of wanders over. Got the elf ranger, a human fighter, a dwarf cleric and some weird demonic spellman. Sexy laments over the lack of a barbarian. Oh, shut <laughs> Naturally, we are all bickering over which ones we are taking and who gets who. Fighter wakes up and rolls over to see what all the noise is. Entire party goes silent and stares at him. <laughs> Eye contact for about 10 seconds. Sexy glares at him. Rolls back over. <laughs> Resume bickering. The elf and dwarf and demon thingy are useless for breeding purposes. Would we'll probably go all white knight in us anyway. The fighter doesn't have any redeeming qualities other than being a wuss. Unfortunately for him, that's a quality we want. Knock the rest of the party senseless with clubs and take all their stuff. Even take their clothes because they're huge and we can make wardrobes worth of stuff out of them. Punk has the caster's book and can hear it whispering to her. Book feels its domination attempt. Punk's too drunk to notice or care. Drag the fighter back with us. Nobody particularly wants him but free labour is free labour. If we're lucky, his friends will come looking for us and bring more free loot with him. Loot's always better when it shows up at your door with no effort on your part. Can't read signs for crap, but we can backtrack with the best of them. Make it back to the cave and toss the new guy in a wooden cage. Not sure what good he is, but it's a start. Boys have been busy making the cave less depressing. <laughs> we're officially rocking the Stone Age technology when Jack makes a water-powered hammer out of logs. Kraz loves the idea and demands a new one for her gong so she can work even less. <laughs> we appear to have some sort of garden taking form in the front yard thanks to the rest of the guys. They are also cultivating the mushrooms that are growing all over the cave. First asked us to get some livestock so that the guys don't need to rely on hunting to get meat. Get shot down instantly since we don't want to work. 
changes our minds when he explains that more livestock equals less hunting. Less hunting means less chores for us. Any work that means less work is good work. <laughs> Bumble our way back out into the woods again. Punk is actually capable of reading the road signs for once. Make our way to some farm in the outskirts of a small village. Sneak our way over and divide up the work. Ho, Lee and Fu are heading for the chicken coop, while Kraz and Punk go to find some pigs. Sexy wanders off somewhere to find something large and valuable. Kraz and Punk get to the pigs and are impressed with how fat and lazy they are. Truly, these beasts are something to aspire to be. <laughs> Try to push them. Nope. Can't lift them either. Even tried levering them with the clubs. Fat bastards won't move. <laughs> Settle and bickering over how to get them out of the mud while sitting on them. Squawking and feathers coming out of the chicken coop at a rather ridiculous rate. Here a thunk as a crossbow bolt hits the shed beside us. New plan. Sit on top of the biggest and meanest looking boar in the herd. Smash the gong. Book it as the farmer and his sons come out of the house. Plough through the gate. Pigs all make a break for it. See the triplets hauling ass with chickens under their arms. Sexy comes thundering along, carrying a damn cow over her shoulder. <laughs> Pigs and chickens and cows running all over the place. Bill is chasing the farmer. The night is a hellish mixture of screaming animals, screaming people, and a gong that never stops. <laughs> <laughs> Escape into the woods with five hens, a rooster, a half wild boar, and a dairy cow. Good job, team. Good job. Not bad. <laughs> Get back to the cave. Something's wrong. Don't see the men doing our work for us. Can't have that. Lee attempts to dramatically kick open the door. Three foot tall and 40 pounds. Only really enough to make it lightly swing open, but it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Guys are all tied up and surrounded by overgrown lizard women. Kobold's trying to take our men. No! Oh, oh hell no! Nah. <laughs> Fu asks the rest of the party whether our cave is filled with stinks or skanks. <laughs> <laughs> that line kicks off the biggest bitch fest this side of Faerun. More insults and threats in five minutes than most campaigns have in months. Some of my favourites were overgrown geckos, dragon shit with legs from us and flat-chested troll snout and pig-faced shin humpers from them. Things boil over when their leader compares punk to sexy sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on, bitch. <laughs> punk tosses her great club aside as Kraz hits the gong, charges in with a grapple and shove. Both hit the floor. Cat fight in the middle of the cave. Lots of hair, spine pulling and clawing. Both sides are cheering on their rest respective boss. Guys are just staring in awe as two groups of tiny psychotic monster girls fight over who gets to enslave them. <laughs> Except for Grog. He's rooting for his wifey. <laughs> yeah. Goes on for about a dozen rounds due to bad rolls and tiny damage. Eventually Punk gets angry and takes the penalty for lethal damage. Rolls a crit. Finishes the kobold with a headbutt so brutal it causes two points of recoil damage. Gets a delicious morale bonus. Team Goblin cheers and celebrates with a charge. Slaps kobolds all over the cave with clubs and mauls. Sexy is using them as a weapon when she isn't going hawk. Kraz summons a pack of owls to go peck at them because it's hilarious. Beat the absolute tar out of them and tie them up. Untie the guys while we debate what to do with the kobolds. Have the boys start building pens for the animals while we think. Punk, as usual, is the woman with the plan. Next day... We stole more pigs from the farmer, and we left an equal amount of butt-naked, tied-together kobolds in their place. <laughs> <laughs> left a sign that said, THIEFS, <laughs> in front of them. <laughs> we also stole a bull that sexy wrestled to the ground, but we didn't have a big enough lizard to leave for that. The cave now had a, mostly, self-sustaining farm with cows, pigs and chickens, as well as a garden and mushroom farm. Jack is working on a primitive lumber mill, while first teaches the new guy. We named him Wimp. How to tend to all the livestock. Ka has mostly accepted his fate as the gardener and impromptu hairdresser. <laughs> he only tried to escape twice that week. That's good. That's good. Come on. Steady diet of booze and boobs have turned Grog around to Punk's side. Next goal is to capture other useful men so that we can pull ourselves out of the Stone Age. This whole civilised thing is kind of nice when you don't have to work and get pampered all day. Maybe one day we'll even let the guys wear something other than the loincloths. <laughs> 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 
Probably not, though. <laughs> Be me. Still in the Goblin Gang. On a quest to find more skilled men to make our lives easier. Any work is too much work. Getting used to being pampered by modern luxuries like clothes and furniture. Need some specialists. After some coaxing and bardic magic, first told us where the closest big village was and what jobs people had there. Had a very drunk grog write down a checklist for us, since he can do the font from beer barrels. <laughs> Punk is real good at reading those. Blacksmith, mason, tanner, tailor, apothecary, barber, potter, cobbler and cooper. Had Grog explained to us what all these words meant. After a lesson on human culture and jobs, which we didn't really pay attention to, we set off to find the town. Knowing where we were going made this trip significantly easier and much faster. Once we approached town, we started our usual routine of hiding and sneaking in. Fell apart pretty quickly, as it was still the middle of the day. After a few tense minutes and bad rolls, Sexy was spotted by a villager. Just waved and went about his business. <laughs> Party freaks out and starts throwing theories as to what the hell was going on. Alternate universes and mind control were on the table and heavily considered. Not nearly that interesting. Kobold we left behind got blamed for the thefts and the wagon attack got blamed on orcs. None of the merchants were willing to believe they got throttled by three foot tall little girls. <laughs> Four goblins, a goblin with a big chest and an overgrown goblin were far beneath the worries of a multi hundred person village. Apparently, as long as we didn't cause any trouble, we were free to go about our business. Unfortunately, we were goblins, and causing trouble was our business. String of terrible decisions started at the local inn, where Punk made an amazing discovery. Weird kinda shiny rocks people carried around could be exchanged for booze. Yellow shiny ones could be exchanged for a lot of booze. Barkeeper was a little sceptical when she had to get on her tiptoes to see over the counter, but the giant club swayed him to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> had the greatest day of her young life. Sexy got in an arm wrestling competition and was cleaning houses while the rest of us busied ourselves, collecting the winnings and pickpocketing people. Met her match when a barbarian came in. After a few rounds, she actually lost. She needed that barb. Luckily, nobody there spoke Goblin, and we agreed that when we left, he was coming with us, whether he wanted to or not. The barbarian assumed our gibberish was us talking about his strength, which wasn't entirely wrong. Got kicked out a little later after someone tried to feel up Punk, and she knocked him through the wall. Let's play one of the boys in the comments section from yesterday's video. <laughs> yeah, but not before downing two gallons of ale. She's the same size as the rest of us. We're convinced that she stores it all in her chest and it gives her super strength. Beer makes my titty grow. <laughs> <laughs> Soon as sun falls, the abductions begin. Start off with the cooper since he had a wagon and naturally a lot of barrels. Also because he saw us when we were trying to steal said wagon. Gets punked. <laughs> Stuff him in a barrel and begin our trip downtown. Barber and apothecary lived with each other, so sexy just shot putted Kras and the triplets down their chimney. <laughs> Sneak through the house, stealing everything since plants are light. Triplets break into the spice and powder room, start stuffing it in all their clothes. One of the triplets produces an incredibly realistic Indian accent that triggers my IT worker PSD. <laughs> <laughs> Fui, help me rub that elven essential herbs and spices on my golden skin. <laughs> I'm not doing an Indian accent. No. I'm not get, doing it. No, we'll get flagged for that. So we'll I don't know. Laughing wakes up the apothecary and surgeon. Quickly put them back to sleep. Stuff them in two barrels. Scoot our merry way along towards the craftsman district. Nab one of the smiths who was up late working. Toss some of his tools in the back. Quickly toss some back out when they light a barrel on fire. <laughs> Tongs didn't look hot. Clattering and yelling, waking up some smiths. Book it to the tanner's area nearby. Sexy just charges in. House is filled with wolf and beer hides. The barbarian is a tanner. Demands the barbarian come live with her. Imagine this little green thing coming in, kicking your door, and it's like, you come with me! <laughs> <laughs> like three foot tall. Yeah. No, Sex is quite tall, isn't she? She's a hobgoblin. Oh, I don't know. She's the only tall one. Oh, right, okay. Barbarian counters with a challenge. Sexy naturally agrees. We don't have time for this shit. Stuck guarding the door while the two barbarians have a wrestling match. Things got real when they both popped their rage. Knocking the house apart with flying elbows and suplexes. 
Sexy gets thrown through a wall and into the street, gets up smiling and charges back in. The militia is starting to show up and the Smiths are not happy. Have a nice little street brawl while guarding the door and wagon. Throw some coals and hot metals from the nearby forges onto some rooftops. Let's get it started, ha! Let's get it started, ha! Let's get it started in here! (laughs) They monetize. (laughs) Finally, Sexy comes back out with the barbarian KO'd over her shoulder. Toss him in the cart and smack the horses. Get chased out of town by a small mob. Throw rocks and insults as we leave the now burning town. (laughs) Get back to the cave. Name the guys after their jobs because we're too lazy and it makes life easy. Turns out most of their last names were their jobs anyway. Smith, Cooper, Barber, Tanner. Apparently it's a man thing. (laughs) Except Apothecary. We'll just call him Doc. Humans were too stupid to make an easy name for that. Hand them all over to Jack so he can build them beds and workshops. DM decides to be mean and give the NPCs their own personalities. Jack isn't too thrilled about the barbarian. Ask him what they have him for. Sexy keeps the strong ones. Nothing else is worth her time. Jack argues he's stronger. Barb challenges him too. Sexy is actively encouraging them. (laughs) Jack flexes to show off his strength. Barb does the same. While his guard is down, Jack slugs him right between the eyes. Barb is down for the count. Look over at Sexy. I am the strongest! Stunned beyond words. Rest of us drag the Barb outside and dump him in the woods. Don't need him anymore. Completely forgot that we needed him for leather work. (laughs) When we come back inside, Sexy and Jack are gone. Grump about how they're off having fun while we're stuck doing all the work with the guys. By doing work, we mean moaning about the possibility of doing work. Still can't work stone or make pots. Tossed out the only guy who knew how to make clothing. Complained to the guys that we aren't being sufficiently pampered. Most of them were recently abducted from their homes, so they don't exactly care. First ends up forcing them all to work because we wandered off to take naps from our long day of being evil overlords. (laughs) Start keeping track of what we've actually done. Goblinoids are to be attacked on sight in town. Farms and caravans have been raided. Part of the town has been burnt down. Kobold's clan has been wiped out. Nearly a dozen men have been abducted and enslaved. Adventuring party knows of us and is actively preparing to hunt us down to avenge their comrade. Realise we've been doing some absolutely terrible things. If we weren't so small and adorable, this would look really bad. The true face of evil is waist high. (laughs) Hey guys, just throwing this quick edit in. Um, You should check out this artist. We used them for yesterday's thumbnail and today's thumbnail. They do... um Let's just say they do some more more deviant artwork, and like you know, if you guys are looking at any like you know short stacks which we've been doing, you know, definitely check them out. Check out Nerd Bean. All their links will be in the top, you know, in the description and linked in a comment along with the straw poll. So definitely go ahead and check that out. But back on to the actual, you know, the, the actual real like, the Well, I must say, I love Felix's stuff. See this author, anything he does is fucking outstanding. Yeah. I really enjoy his stuff. I'm just legion he doesn't like more, you know? Uh, The last one he did was like seven months ago. Yeah. And we haven't had anything since. And like, I was really in the mid for it after all you boys were like, oh, short sacks, uh, uh, you know, in the comments. So I was like, well, you know, I really enjoyed this story. Indulge it. I'll indulge you, you know what I mean? I think it's one of my favourites. I really enjoyed it. So I did. I, I, I love the whole concept and how adorable they are, but yet how malicious and, you know, it just worked. I really enjoyed it. I think my uh, spirit animal is the big one. Sexy? Yeah. Yeah. Because I just destroy everything <laughs> Yeah, you see. do. You're fucking lethal for it. But no, look, let us know what you think down below. Also, remember, let us know who the best wifey is yeah. uh, down below. It's going to be pinned in the comments, so definitely check that out. Um, anything else we need to talk about before we forget? Models, Models Megan's channel, channel, all the usual stuff. Look, yeah. you know you guys know what we talk about at the end. But look, as always, remember to subscribe, hit that wee bell, you know, the actual subscribe button. You yeah. know, <laughs> not, not, the, not the subscribe button, but the real subscribe <laughs> button. And then there's an other subscribe button underneath that one as well, so... I'm sure you guys can work it out. Um, But look, as always, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Bye!